Hello class. Today is 21st of September 2020 and this is the class AEM 722 Ruminant Animals. In this video we are going to discuss what ruminant animals are. We should be able to identify examples of these animals around our environment. We should also be able to discuss the advantages of this class of animals over other livestock species and be able to define the difference between them and other animals. You are welcome to the class 722 ruminant animals. Like I said earlier, the class is AEM 722 ruminant animals is a postgraduate class taking you through ruminant animals and their advantages. Okay. The topic for today is introduction to ruminant animals. My name is Brace Jockton and today is the 21st of September 2020. Uh, by way of introduction, or should I say at the beginning, agriculture, particularly the rearing of livestock, is seen as many people as a course that does not need too much study. Mainly because we grow up seeing our parents keeping animals in one form or the other, and also we also uh, live with the product these animals produce on daily basis. So we feel there isn't much need to give it a lot of study. But do we know that if we study these animals and are able to understand the basic principles behind the management of this livestock? there will be a lot of improvement in efficiency of production as well as the yield that we are able to get from these animals. And so, ruminant animals are actually easy to keep. They reproduce easily, we see that around our household, and they also give us products such as meat and milk for household consumption or for income. This is to say that they meet the nutritional needs of the house as well as providing an economic value within the house. But the big question most people ask, and I can see some people even in this class asking is, what are these class of ruminants that, what are these class of animals that are referred to as ruminants? Or what does the word ruminant mean? And how do these animals actually differ from other uh, animals? Some people are also asking, why are they said to be easy to keep? And so we'll try to provide some answers within this uh, video. Ruminant animals are actually herbivores. And by the word herbivore, we are referring to plant-eating mammals that are able to acquire nutrients from plant-based food by fermenting it in a specialized stomach prior to digestion, principally through micro, uh, microbial action. And so we are referring to a class of animals that mainly eat plants and have a specialized system of digestion that allows the use of microbial organisms in the digestion process. This is a definition by wikipedia.org. Having said that, what are the examples of these animals that you can find around? And you can see that some of these animals are cattle, sheep, goats, deer, and the elk. These animals are very different from other classes of livestock such as the poultry, like the chicken, even the rabbits or pigs because this other class of animals do not have this specialized stomach that enables microbial digestion. And so, what is this specialized stomach that we are talking about? And how does it look like? If you look on top of your screen, you can see a typical picture of a cow, and you can see the anatomy of the cow's digestive system. Looking through it, you can see that there is 
and from the mouth there is an esophagus that leads into the rumen. Before that, you see a section that is referred to as the reticulum, which joins the rumen, and together they are called the reticulum rumen. You can also see the omasium, which is a small section that looks roundish where uh, where this where I'm pointing to right now, and you can see the abomasium that is a long tube that goes to the intestine. This reticulum abomasium or masium and the rumen actually are the four compartments that make up the specialized stomach that we have been referring to. Now if you look down, you can see a diagrammatic representation of these organs we have talked about in the specialized uh, stomach. You can see the esophagus that comes from the mouth. You can also see the reticulum just as you have seen it there. The omasium the abomasium, the rumen, and then you can see this small intestine that takes it out to the large intestine and then you get to the uh, anus and it's voided out. So this uh, uh, vat looking organ that is composed of these four main sections is actually what makes up the specialized stomach that is absent in other classes and it is within these four sections that microbial digestion can take place. This section allows the growth and existence of microorganisms. And because of the presence of these microorganisms, plant-based materials that you and I cannot digest are being digested by this class of animals. And that is why they can eat mostly plant roughages and they are able to survive comfortably. Now, what is the advantage of this organ or system or the presence of this system within the ruminant animal? And so you look at the table that I presented there for you, and you can see the advantages of this class of animals over other kinds of species. The biggest advantage of ruminants is that they can consume cellulose forages, such as hay alfalfa, other grasses. These sources of nutrition make up a large quantity of the world's available food resources. And ruminants exist on these materials within our environment. And that is why you see our cows, you see our sheep, you see our goats, as they go about grazing, they eat a lot of these grasses. And most times we even forget to provide any other form of supplement because they appear comfortable with what they eat in our environment. I'm sure you know that other class of animals, like you and I, human beings, like the chicken, cannot go about eating these uh, grasses and survive com comfortably on it. Ruminants also have a unique ability to acquire protein from the microbes in their digestive tract. These microorganisms we have talked about that reside within the digestive tract of the ruminants actually exist in that system, live their lives through that system, and die within the system. They therefore provide a very good source of my, uh, digestive protein to the animal. And so even where protein is lacking in the ingested food material, the presence of these microorganisms actually provide protein for the animal. And this enables ruminants to acquire the large amount of protein that they need from a diet that is actually very low in protein. Ruminants are also able to acquire vitamins from their microorganisms. This includes vitamin B and vitamin C. So some of these vitamins that are not provided for in the diet can actually be uh, synthesized through the action of these microorganisms. And that is why the supplementation of vitamins, particularly, particularly that of vitamin B and vitamin K, may not be too necessary for ruminant animals. These are some of the advantages these ruminant animals have over other uh, livestock species. And so this brings us to the question of what role do ruminant livestock play in the agricultural system? 
or what is the relevance of this class of animals in the agricultural system. And of course, you know, one of the most important ones is that they provide us with meat. Is it cattle? Is it sheep? Is it goat? Is it deer? They provide us with the meat we require. They also provide us with milk, which is processed into various products. You can actually see there that there, are, there is the fresh milk, there is cheese, there is uh, ice cream, and uh, there is all forms of um, products that are actually produced from the milk that is obtained from um, this class of animals. And of course, we are all going green these days, and so the issue of organic agriculture is taking grounds and becoming a major sector in the agricultural space. Ruminants provide cow dung that are eventually used as organic fertilizers that are used to grow crops. You can see the green area that is uh, the plants that are growing in that area. And so with um, the world is now calling for the less use of inorganic fertilizers and calling for the use of organic fertilizers. We get this from ruminant animals. Of course, then another source is income. It provides income. It can be sold either as processed product or as live animals, and you can generate income. Foreign exchange are being realized also through this class of animals. And so we are coming to the end of this uh, class. The first topic in AEM 722, ruminant animals. And so what have we learned so far? We have been able to define what ruminant animals are. We are able to give examples of these animals that are exist within our neighborhood. We have also been able to talk about the advantage of ruminant animals over other livestock species. And we have been able to show the gastrointestinal tract, also referred to as GIT, of ruminants and how it is different from other classes of livestock. So thank you for having this class. Until we come again in the next topic of AEM 722, Ruminant Animals, it's goodbye from me, your facilitator, Grace Jockton.